I'm so excited to be here today. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's been such a fantastic few days here with all these spectacular performances and insightful discussions from music industry leaders. For several years in China, I've also had the privilege to speak with many entertainment industry leaders and marketing professionals. And when it comes to entertainment marketing, one brand name keeps coming up, and that's Pepsi. Obviously, brands and entertainment companies are running into some of the same challenges, shrinking budgets, fragmented channels, and standing at the intersection of both of these worlds is a leader who's found a way to produce new models that face these challenges and introduce new opportunities for artists to shine in China. We're very honored today to have Mr. Richard Lee, Chief Marketing Officer of both PepsiCo China as well as Tingyi Asahi Beverages. And for those of you who don't know, Tingyi's Mastercom brand is actually the number one beverage company in China with a wide portfolio. So please welcome Mr. Richard Lee. Hi, Trevor. Good to see you. Great. Thank you for such a <laughs> great introduction. And really, it's an incredible honor to be speaking here. Good afternoon, everyone. And a great song by Spender, right? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I, I don't know why they put Spender in front of me. I hope they do not see PepsiCo just as a Spender. <laughs> well, you're going to be singing later, right? <laughs> So let's jump right into it. Richard, you've overseen so many entertainment-based marketing campaigns in China. Uh, we're going to talk about music a little bit later in deeper uh, focus. But can you talk about some of your broad guiding principles when it comes to entertainment marketing and brand building? Well, at PepsiCo, uh, we build brands by maximizing the depth and breadth of each consumer touch point. And we have uh, kind of like guiding principles. It's called the 7 E. Seven E's. Okay. Well, let's go through. I think we should go through each of the E's individually. I mean, that looks like a, a pretty overwhelming chart, uh, <laughs> but I'm sure you know it by heart. Uh, so, I mean, talk about when you look at the seven E's, the first E that comes to mind uh, would be which one? I mean, emotion is something that you're probably emotional power. driven by. So, emotional power. What does that actually mean? Well, emotional power, basically, uh, we want to evoke emotions in consumer through sexuality, I mean, for sen sensuality and <laughs> passion. And celebrity is our best way of uh, achieving it. And this is something that's been central to Pepsi's power in China, the use of celebrities. But you have a really unique way of using celebrities. I mean, some brands, they sign one or two celebrities, but you seem to sign a whole bunch of celebrities at the same time. Uh, can you talk about why you do that? Oh, absolutely. We want to sort of like, you know, sign a wide range of celebrities because we want to give the brand a multi-dimensional brand texture, uh, especially through the mix of international and local stars, and the mix of sports and music stars. And so you don't worry about confusing the consumer if you've got five, six, seven, eight faces to the brands? You think that it actually helps define the brand better because it helps define specific types of cool, for example? Well, Pepsi is an um, icon for youthful cool, right? And we want to shade, show the different shade of the cool. So for example, we'll use like Beckham to represent the uh, dynamic side of the cool, whereas like Fei Wang, the pop diva, to represent the soulful side of cool. Now, I've been in China in the marketing and branding industry before I started animation uh, for uh, 10 years, and I heard some stories about how you sign celebrities. Is it true that you have like this really intense interview process? Yes, we do have an interview process uh, because we want to sign stars or celebrities not because they are popular, but because they the personal values and beliefs are consistent with our brand. And also, we want to establish an elite standard. It should be an honor to be inducted in the PepsiCo family. So that probably explains why there's a handful of top stars across China, but it seems like Pepsi's had uh, tremendous success in signing most of them um, long term. It's all about key partners. Um, so we try to solve, like, you know, customize our advertising campaigns to suit with the artist's own uh, passion. So for example, when we sign Jay Chow, we'll ask him, okay, what do you like besides music? And he said, Kung Fu. So we asked him to write a song, and it eventually became Long Chuan, which means Dragon Fist. And we'll ask our advertising agency to develop a campaign around it. We even shot his music video. Okay, so that's really interesting. It, it sounds like it's really co-creation uh, between the artist and the brand which is very different than the typical model. I mean, usually brands create a campaign idea, 
yeah. and then they employ a celebrity. Yeah. Is this something that you tried in the beginning and decided it didn't work, or when you just started out, you said, I want to do it my way in a new way? No, we should always do it like this way, right? It's about partnership. Exactly. Great. Well, I mean, celebrities are just one ingredient, but if you look at the next E, um, you've already established that's the emotion, and now we're going to produce entertainment value. Uh, it seems pretty broad. Can you kind of define what entertainment value well, means? Well, all it means is just that at PepsiCo, we think of ourselves as an entertainment company, not just selling soft drinks. So everything we do is have to be entertainment related. For example, we'll shoot movies, we'll produce um, songs, uh, we do music videos, we, we stage concerts. So you, but you also produce ads, um, and you just see the ad as kind of one small component of a bigger campaign, a more holistic plan? Uh, well, no, I mean, it's never just about doing the kind of like, you know, advertising, yeah. So it's more than just the TVC? What no, because it's all about entertainment content. Okay, I think we need to, to see an example. Yeah, yeah, I think we sh should see an example of this because if you're talking about maximum entertainment, I mean, that's really spanning everything from what you talked about, music videos, shows, reality TV, festivals, and things like that. Yeah, I want to show you one example. It's, the, it's a multi-year, multimedia entertainment franchise that we've developed in China over three years now, and it's called Bring Happiness Home. Uh, let's take a look at the video to see what it is and how we do it. In a nation where economic progress comes with a loss of humanity, PepsiCo China wants to remind Chinese youth of the importance of traditional family values, as well as community spirit, particularly during the Chinese New Year. An opportunity for PepsiCo is that the names of our biggest brands share the character Le, which means happiness. And this was the inspiration for our multi-year multimedia entertainment franchise, Bring Happiness Home, centered on short films. The power of PepsiCo marketing meant all the top celebrities of China were more than happy to be a part of the stories we were telling. In 2012, we embarked on establishing family as the source of real happiness. We reminded Chinese youth that they are the happiness they bring home to their parents. For 2013, we set out to remind everyone that family is more than just relatives and that a home is not just a house, but wherever you find love and happiness. In 2014, we dimensionalized Bring Happiness Home into actions of happiness giving. Set in a supermarket, the stories were inspired by the unique attributes of our brands and show how happiness giving impacts different relationships, from the love between father and daughter to the bonds between friends and neighbors. Of course, entertainment was not only about the movies, but also the music. The mentors and winners of top talent shows China Voice and China Idol got together to produce a music video and became a hit and topped the playlist of almost every radio station. And we pushed our entertainment content to every kind of screen imaginable. From outdoor to transit to online media, no touch point was left unexplored. We also worked with the undisputed leaders of China's rapidly changing digital landscape. To their users who searched for train tickets home, Baidu joined PepsiCo to give happiness greetings in the form of playful celebrity emoticons. Together with Tencent's WeChat, the world's fastest growing mobile social app, we encouraged users to record and remix Pepsi's song with personalized happiness greetings. Finally, we wanted to give happiness for real to those who need it. PepsiCo worked together with popular movie star Huang Chaoming and Tmall, China's largest B2C e-commerce site, to rally consumers to make micro donations on its online payment system. The collected funds went to creating happiness packages, which were delivered to impoverished mothers across the nation. Together, we brought warmth and joy to more than 20,000 families in China. In short, our goal of Bring Happiness Home was to transform China from a nation of buying happiness into a nation of giving happiness. Bring Happiness Home brought home impactful results. From the first year to the third year, our content viewership grew from 700 million to 1.4 billion. Awareness reached an astounding 91%.
total earned media was valued at over 12 million US dollars. Bring Happiness Home was even endorsed by the Chinese Ministry of Culture, who spotlighted it for the whole nation on state-owned CCTV news, elevating PepsiCo's corporate reputation in the eyes of all Chinese citizens. But business performance aside, our greatest happiness came from inspiring people to rediscover the humanity that was lost in the pursuit of progress. Okay, that was really impressive, and I want to take a minute to put it into context for those of you who uh, perhaps aren't familiar with those Chinese celebrities. First of all, the fact that you were able to sign all of these celebrities and bring them together was really impressive. It's like running an ad campaign with the top movie stars in Hollywood and the top singers and bringing them all together. But I think more importantly was the way that you tied in a social message that really resonates with the Chinese consumer, which is the whole concept of family. Can you talk a little bit about your inspiration behind that? Well, because at PepsiCo here, we also believe in performance for purpose. So uh, we want to leverage our marketing resources to make a difference in the society, to have a positive impact on the Chinese youth. And actually, that's one of the reasons why we could get so many celebrities to, to join hands to do this, because all of us want to do, make a difference together. And that brings us to our, our next point, uh, brand uh, evangelism. You know, I think most sophisticated consumers, especially even in China now, they look at celebrities endorsing various brands. Um, you'll see someone who's endorsing a piano, and the next minute he's endorsing a car, and then potato chips. And I think a lot of times they're thinking, well, this celebrity doesn't really believe it. Uh, and yet you hold yourself to a standard where everyone who works at Pepsi or represents Pepsi has to be an evangelist. Yeah. So can you talk about that? So brand evangelism to us is about living and breathing our brand values, which is about sparking the unexpected and the excitement of now. Um, our employees live it, and the celebrities live, live by it. Uh, one example that I want to give you is that like, um, uh, a few years back, we would invite the superstar celebrity like Aaron Kwok to come to our Martin conference, not to perform a song and dance, but actually to give a PowerPoint presentation of our Martin plan. Now, the next year, just the opposite. So our Pepsi marketing director would actually wrap out the entire marketing plan. He wrapped it. He, he wrapped it without a single PowerPoint slide. Wow. That's how I'm going to do all my PowerPoints from now on. <laughs> so uh, can you talk about, aside from the use of celebrities and employees, how else do you, you know, get people to evangelize your brand? We actually try to leverage our Pepsi brand color blue. And uh, for example, we'll have our celebrities like, you know, wearing blue costumes <laughs> and uh, even dye their hair blue in part of the image shift. And uh, for the PepsiCo like, uh, 30th anniversary in China, uh, we actually branded the Great Wall with a blue jacket. Right. The idea is that we want to give deeper meaning to the color blue. Now, I remember this blue carpet because I saw it in the news and it actually caused a lot of controversy. I think it was the Hong Kong Film exactly. Awards. <laughs> Right, where you guys turned the red carpet into a blue carpet. Uh, I mean, that was a pretty controversial move. I don't know why they would agree to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but it works, right? I mean, in yeah, the end, a lot of people talked about it. Um, and it was kind of introducing the brand into places that were unexpected. Yes, that's the whole idea. So let's look at the next E. Omnipresent exposure. I mean, that looks like something a marketer came up with if they were being paid by the syllable. So can we talk about what that actually means? Um, Omnibus exposure to us is about taking our brand beyond the normal setting into other aspects of our young consumers' lives. Uh, to us, it's all about cross-boundary partnerships. For example? So for example, you know, Pepsi can be a mobile phone, Pepsi can be credit card, and Pepsi can be fashion. We actually had our fashion show at the Shanghai Fashion Week uh, last year. And when you do these fashion shows and you pick brands, you're trying to pick ones that fit, obviously, the criteria you've talked about that you filter your celebrity endorsers as well? I mean, Absolutely. Okay. Like, uh, also, about two years ago, we collaborated with um, Bathing Ape, the uh, clothing uh, wear from Japan. And we really have like, a crossover partnership. Like, you know, we launched uh, a series of, of cans uh, based on the um, unique Bathing Ape pattern. And they also launched a line of like, clothing uh, based on Pepsi-inspired pattern as well. So it's like a crossover, true crossover. So I think what's really cool is how you're taking cultural icons that obviously resonate in China, but are really, they could be international brands. And you're allowing them to enter your world. 
yes, and access absolutely. your customers. Yes, absolutely. We would love to work with like you know all kinds of you know brands and companies, entertainment, media. So one thing anything that, is possible. One thing that really impresses me about this type of thinking is the focus on the sense of partnership. But it sounds like that's a lot more work and a lot more investment than you know brands are normally used to. I mean, let's look at the the next E. And we'll talk about how do you evaluate investment effectiveness. Investment effectiveness to us is all about generating earned media. It's about producing great entertainment content that actually help to inspire the creation of more content. Do you have an example? Yes, um, it's an example. It's about like you know, a few years back when uh, we celebrated the 25th anniversary of the release of Michael Jackson's uh, Bad album. You know, the album Bad. And uh, for this event, we actually created a special limited edition can called the King of Pop. You know, it's double meaning, King of Pop, right? right. And, uh, and this can actually, or this catalyst, really stir uh, uh, the sort of like the inspiration of many more Michael Jackson inspired um, materials. For example, um, the Michael Jackson tattoo that you see on the slide here. And also um, can stacking, a, a huge piece of artwork made up of Pepsi cans. You mean like fans actually just stacked a bunch of cans to look yes, like Michael Jackson? Yes, actually, actually the uh, image that you see here, like on the uh, left hand side, is actually um, taken from the helicopter above. So we actually have like, you know, a lot of cans made up of this image here. Wow, and it's true, I mean, I saw in the news also that, you know, fans would kind of break out into flash mobs with Absolutely, dancing. Absolutely, flash mobs. And, yeah. and you guys are you sure? They would, you and they would actually like do the flash mobs and they put it on the uh, uh, social mobile. And you guys content. didn't plant those dancers. No. <laughs> Were you well, there? That's what is no. flash mob, right? <laughs> okay. Not be planned. Yeah. Uh, so let's look at the next E. Collaborative engagement. Okay, I have to say I've hosted so many shows, and everyone always talks about engagement, and very few actually do it well. So what do you do at Pepsi that actually truly engages your customers? Well, the way is to really work directly with the consumers. Um, we actually think of our consumers as our CEOs, uh, literally. Uh, we actually have a uh, PepsiCo Youth Board of Directors, which we invite youth leaders um, like yourself you know, to come to uh, critique our campaigns and also to um, provide us with the foresight and to drive the future direction of campaign. So um, this year, we actually take it further by celebrating the lives and works of 12 youth leaders through our packaging and online media. And these youth leaders, how did you find them? Well, they, they basically, they're not just like entertainment celebrities. I mean, they, they come from like, you know, different walks of life, but then they all have like um, a, a passion to make a difference in the society. So for example, there was like um, a cartoon artist that wanted to sort of like, you know, write cartoons to help the, the deaf and the mute to, to communicate. And there's another guy that actually want to um, uh, leverage trash items, right, to make it into something usable. Okay, so recycle. The recycle, uh, yes. Recycle and turn into to useful technology. Yes, but then all of these people, like, you know, they have the mission, right? But then they, 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 they really don't have the kind of platform. Right. So we want to support them through our resources. And when you say young consumers as CEO, it sounds like though this, this campaign sounds more like you're turning your consumers into celebrities. Yes, so basically nowadays like everyone can be celebrities, right? And, and have you done any other sort of cross collaborations where your consumers, they create content, you know, they, they uh, you know, uh, is that something that you want to continue to expand on with this sure, campaign? Sure, sure. So it's like though, let's go to the next year, is what we call the, uh, the yeah. digital and mobile ecosystem. Uh, what we mean by that is that every single idea that we developed have to be uh, mobile-led. So unlike you know, many years ago that we have to think about from the TV-centric first, right now it has to work from the mobile. And I have two examples to, to share with you. Um, one is like um, the, the, the collaboration with Timor, uh, which we did last year. So the idea is that each bottle cap would mean one RMB in cash discount, where consumers can go to Pepsi Timor, you know, to buy anything they want. Actually, not just Pepsi Timor, like you know, all kinds of like Timor items. Um, so we, because we want to do this 
to enable, to empower consumers to buy what they want, to create what they want. Okay, so, sorry, just so I understand this correctly and everyone else understands this correctly. If I bought a Pepsi yes. and I scanned the code, yes. then I could go online to Tmall, which is uh, one of the largest e-commerce sites in China, and I get a dollar off. Yes, basically. so if you buy one Pepsi, one RMB. And I can buy anything. Buy anything, anything on Tmall. Because not necessarily every single consumer wants to buy Pepsi, right? right? But they may want to buy something from Tmall. So we want to leverage our brand at the center to create the ecosystem to support them in achieving their objectives. Okay. So one other example that I want to share with you is our collaboration with Maypie. Um, it's about, like you, you heard early on about the Bring Happiness Home, right? So in the past, it's about like, you know, us creating the short films and push it to the consumers. So this time, we want to provide the consumers with the template, with the tools to create their own mini movies. Let's take a look. Pepsi has shaped and led youth culture in China for more than 30 years with the biggest celebrities and the best music and sports sponsorships. But there's one little problem. These days, most millennials don't seem to care anymore. Technology has enabled them to become celebrities in their own social circles. They now create content and shape youth culture by building a brand they will always be in love with, themselves. Each day, millions of terabytes of photos and videos are created, manipulated, and uploaded by young people of their lives, which they only share with their friends and families. So how can a marketing giant like Pepsi become part of their inner circle again? Our solution was simple. We returned the brand to our core consumers. Here's how we did it. Every year, hundreds of millions of Chinese people return home to celebrate Chinese New Year, the most important occasion on the calendar. They naturally use their smartphones to document this epic journey. Pepsi decided to draw on this existing behavior to co-create something truly meaningful. China's first crowdsourced movie. Through a partnership with Meipai, this nation's most popular video creation and social mobile app, travelers were encouraged to shoot 10-second videos of their journeys and family moments which were instantly broadcasted on an exclusive Pepsi Maypi platform. This platform was accessed through QR codes on our packaging. Even their favorite celebrities got in on the action. In total, this co-creation sparked 15.4 million pieces of user-generated content. That's over 300,000 submissions every day. One third of all activity on Maypi. The videos were viewed more than 1.2 billion times. That's twice the number of internet users in China. Eventually, 5,000 of the most liked videos selected by our young co-directors were edited together to form a complete feature film. It has always been Pepsi's mission globally to create the most exciting brand entertainment for youth. This year, we would like to thank the young people of China for giving us a big hand. Wow, I do not envy the video editor who had to put together those clips <laughs> in the end. I mean, that seems like a massive undertaking, very successful, um, but really engaging your consumers you know, at a ground level um, and giving them a platform. I mean, that type of content creation, I, I think, is a great segue uh, into our next section because I, I really want to say you know, content creation is something that artists and musicians today are now trying to dabble more into. You know, if we look at concert series, you see that instead of just the show itself, before the show, after the show, there's a lot of that interaction, trying to build a brand. And since we're at Music Matters, I think it's a good time now that we know your framework uh, for dealing with entertainment marketing and brand uh, building. How do we get involved in the music industry? So earlier you talked about Pepsi almost being like an entertainment company. Yes. Um, so we I, I want to. You are an entertainment company. <laughs> okay. So then, tell me from your perspective, um, you know, how do you see the music industry uh, evolving from your perspective? I really think that, like you know, brands and uh, the entertainment industry have to really work closer together. Especially, I'm talking about the music industry uh, because we are actually facing similar challenges, which is. Um, the more sort of like cluttered and fragmented media world, right? But also, we, we do have similar or different like opportunities um, that when we work together, we can, we can be stronger. For example, from the entertainment industry or the music industry, they really want to have marketing dollars to help push the content, to help build the artists, right? Whereas from the, the brand's perspective, we really want to have like, you know, great engaging entertainment content. So if we join hands together, 
This could really be a win-win partnership. And when we, I want to get into more detail though. When you say win-win partnership, that sounds amazing, uh, but where's the money? You know, how does this turn into a, a business model that works for both sides? I mean, can you talk about how this type of partnership could really help the business sure, models sure. Of, of both? It's just like, and I can give you one example. Like, you know, um, I'm sure like many of you have heard of like SM um, from Korea, right? The, the group called EXO. So it's now actually the, uh, the number one uh, group in Korean and Asia. And this year, like a month ago, they decided to sort of like release the um, single called Call Me Baby. So we work with SM to launch the campaign together uh, through our advertising. So I just want to show you the video how we, how we do it and we can talk more. So that's an example, like, you know, like um, SM released the song, you know, they have their own music video, and then we have the song in our commercial, and then we release through our 45 seconds, like, you know, you can say mini music video, and, uh, and we push it through our digital um, sort of like, you know, media, and also obviously on television as well. And you, if you notice carefully, like, you know, in the commercial, there's actually a secret code. Right. Uh, so we can actually engage with consumers as well to find out, okay, how do you crack the code and then you can win a um, special meet and greet with EXO when they come to Shanghai on June 1st. And then June 1st is just right after their own concert. You know, they're having a concert um, in Shanghai on May 30th and May 31st. So everything is sort of like synergistically integrated together. And, and K-pop is obviously huge around the world, but also yeah. very much so in, in China. Yes. yes. Uh, when we talked earlier about your seven E's, uh, you know, I noticed there was omnipresent, uh, uh, you know, your, your exposure. And when we look at these music videos, obviously you've got all those media channels, but how else are you leveraging Pepsi's packaging or, you know, presence? Well, I think the uh, uh, packaging, you know, you know, offers a unique competitive advantage because like, now is really the age of the smartphones, right? Um, so theoretically, our packaging can become the biggest distributor of music and movies, right? So basically people can just like swipe their phone, you know, against our logo and they can be instantly um, led to a, a site to listen to the greatest music, to, to watch the most entertaining movies. And this is something that you think could happen very, very soon in the very near well, future? Well, I think we can <laughs> happen right now, right? Okay. Because like the, the technology really exists. And we try to sort of like experiment, you know, this in Great. China as well. Well, we saw earlier you sign, you know, basically all the top celebrities in China. What's next in terms of artist development for you? Uh, well, literally artist development. Because we, in the past, we have worked with a lot of like, you know, great celebrities. But they're more of the established celebrities. Um, now we want to sort of like use or leverage our resources to help to develop and to groom a lot of like music artists that 
have the talent. They may not necessarily have the platform to exhibit their talent. Um, well, I mean, you heard from Jasper and Alan yesterday that uh, we actually have a Pepsi Music Accelerator program. So we want to sort of like leverage our resources to accelerate, fast track a music artist's career. So here I just want to share with you one example from China. Right, there's a, a great singer, a talented singer who's now become a top star thanks to you and, and, and Pepsi. So let's take a look at her video. She is Momo Wu. It was the year 2012. A young, ordinary girl stepped onto the stage of Voice of China. Her appearance was unusual, her voice even more so. She created a controversy and rapidly attracted lots of attention. She didn't win. She came in second. But PepsiCo knew she was one of a kind. Her voice represents the spirit of millennials. We saw in her a young and talented woman pursuing her dreams. We knew her spirit of live for now will appeal to a brand new audience. Therefore, for the first time, PepsiCo invited an unheralded young singer to be an ambassador and started her on a journey to be shaped as a star. For Momo, we leverage the resources and influence of Pepsi in the entertainment world. We fully funded her first ever music video with the song Live For Now. With the support of Pepsi's omnipresent media push, views of this music video surpassed 300 million and Live For Now topped nine different billboard charts. Next, we invited her to join our Pepsi superstars on our global 2014 football campaign, Shake Your Body. Momo's forays into the stratosphere of entertainment almost instantly brought her more than 11 brand endorsements, fully realizing the commercial value of her star power. We are overjoyed to see a young person fulfill her potential and achieve her dreams. And she is also an inspiration to other young people to do likewise. It goes to show, when one has the spirit of live for now, all is possible. Well, let's welcome Momo Wu to the stage. Yeah. Hello, Momo. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Momo. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Momo, ni hao. Ni hao. Uh, so, Momo, you became famous, obviously, um, on The Voice of China. And afterwards, you really became like the face of, of Pepsi for many young Chinese. Um, at the same time, you know, there's pros and cons, right? The, the great thing about it is that it's very successful. You're in these fantastic campaigns. On the other hand, you have to balance the perception of people thinking maybe you're really commercial. Um, you know, you, you've become embedded with this brand. So can you talk about your 
perspective about what it's like to work with a company like Pepsi. 好，那其实我觉得在大部分的时候，大家看到艺人和品牌的合作，其实就是在广告当中艺人露脸，然后为品牌发声，为品牌代言。但是我跟百事的合作非常不一样，就像之前 Richard 所说的，呃，在我们合作之前，然后我们俩有一次很深度的交谈，呃，谈了关于音乐的很多想法，然后很多时候发。发现我们都是很很、呃、有很多共同点，一拍即合。所以说，呃，像刚才我们看到的《Live for Now》的百事的音乐，呃，那个 MV 的话，呃，就是百事的品牌理念，也是我想表达的态度。所以在这里，我非常感谢百事，感谢 Richard 给我这样一个机会，对，给我这样一个大的舞台，让我去呃尽情的歌唱，嗯。Um, so just briefly, what what Momo said is normally, as celebrities endorse a brand, you know they take their check and then they leave. But her partnership with Pepsi has really been about first the personal connection and alignment of values, and then built on that, it's been a relationship where they've supported her musical goals, and she's obviously a part of the spirit and she loves the energy and the coolness of the brand. So it's something that's become a, a true partnership and something that she's proud of. But one thing I noticed in that video, Richard, I want to ask you about, okay. is no offense, but Momo lost. <laughs> she was second, and I think it's amazing that you took this risk,、um, you know, to really help her build her career and help her achieve her dreams. But I want to know from your perspective. What gave you the courage to take that sort of risk? I think it's fantastic. But but what gave you that courage? Because like you know,、um, as we saw in the video, you know, it's really about what Momo represents. I mean, like she really is like you know the、uh, spirit and icon of the millennials, right? I mean, she is not afraid to take risks.、Uh, she will go all out to pursue her dreams. So we really want to sort of like you know leverage her success to build her success, so that many more. Young artists, you know, would have the same kind of like you know、um, aspiration to do the same thing.、Yeah. And Momo, I want to ask you because、uh, for a lot of the new artists that we have here at Music Matters, and we've watched some of the great performances. I'm sure they're inspired, and they're they're looking at you shooting these amazing campaigns.、Um, what type of advice would you give them、uh, about working with a brand? You know, I'm sure they'll start to and hope to encounter brands like Pepsi that can help them build their careers and take it to the next level. 嗯，其实我觉得我非常想跟大家分享三个字，就是做自己。对，那首先，呃，我觉得要坚持自己的音乐。对，然后我觉得对待音乐要像一个工匠一样，很精心的去对待自己的音乐，才能吸引品牌合作的基本标准。对，那第二点，我觉得就是坚持自己的风格。对，其实我我很觉得我自己的风格，呃，蛮特别的。对，对，但是我觉得重要的是要坚持自己的呃特色。对，然后呃，也许有的时候路上会遇到质疑的声音，呃，有一些自己的矛盾也好，对。但是我觉得就像百事的点赞活动一样，对，要对质疑说莫愁，这句话是我的座右铭。<笑>对，那第三点就是关于要坚持自己的声音。对，然后我也来自中国好声音。对，然后我觉得坚持自己的声音，而且呃，找到和自己呃价值观相匹配的呃合作的这些品牌，是一个很重要的原因。对，然后就像我跟百事的合作，就非常的成功。对。Okay, so very deep wisdom there. I'm going to try to succinctly、uh, explain in English. Essentially, she starts off by saying, you know, be true to yourself. And what she meant, and I saw this, you know, watching her career unfold and build in China firsthand, is when she first got on the show, she actually created a little bit of controversy in the sense that she doesn't fit into a sp specific image box. You know, where someone looks at her and says, oh, she's that type of pop star. She's that type of、uh, of singer.、Um, and she had her own style. And by finding her own style and sticking to it, and not conforming to other people's expectations or demands, she really found her own voice. And her advice to young artists is to really work on finding that voice and then sustaining it, as you might have other pressure、uh, from people to change from time to time. And then finding a brand like Pepsi that believes in your voice, because then that brand can help you amplify it. And bring it to a wider audience. 
that actually is a very important point, you know, um, you know, for new music artists. I know that there are some uh, music artists like you know, coming to this seminar. Is that like you really have to be not afraid and not to compromise because I can you know go back to Momo's case, like you know, in the in the show in the China Voice, actually some of the um, judges were teasing her. They were like you know publicly, literally publicly hu humiliating her, you know, in front of like their viewers. But then she persisted. Um, like she could have lost, but then she took the risk and, and stood by her own music style. And then one of the mentors, right, um, you know, saw in her and then, you know, really tried to like, you know, help her to do, you know, to, to, to rally for her. And then at the same time, I also, you know, watch on, on TV, right? And I saw, wow, this, this young woman is amazing. So this is exactly the kind of spirit that Pepsi wanted. So we signed her as opposed to the, you know, the winner, right? So had, but had she sort of like, you know, sort of like, you know, just compromised into something else, the whole story could have been different. Right, and that was her point as well, is that exactly. she, she sustained and kept to yeah. her vision and, and her style, exactly. her voice. Someone, there, there, there ought to be someone out there looking out for you, if you just like, you know, go by yourself and be yourself. Well, congratulations, Momo. And I think, Richard, you had uh, an announcement you wanted to make today? Oh, actually, like, you know, um, Actually, also thanks to Momo as well, you know, success. We're actually launching uh, a Pepsi Music Accelerator program in China. And this time around, we are sort of like recruiting from campus um, this summer as part of our global Pepsi Challenge campaign. And uh, Momo now actually will be sort of like the mentor of this particular sort of like campus, uh, you know, sort of like, you know, you can say the uh, campus sort of like, you know, music competition. And actually, the uh, winners uh, will get to get like uh, 500,000 sort of like, you know, um, RMB kind of like um, sponsorship and also get a chance to go to Rock in Rio. So you're supporting um, them really with a, a cash prize, but also more importantly, the perhaps the experience, the exposure, the platform. Yes. So, um, we have, so as I said earlier, like, you know, we, we, we're deeply committed in making this our long term strategy. Well, I think this type of artist development initiative is really fantastic to see happening. Congratulations on the program. Um, and uh, I think you guys want to, to do a actually, formal announcement? Or? No, actually, we just want to sort of like, you know, take advantage of uh, this opportunity that Momo is here, that we are, we're all, all here to actually award her with a certificate of honor, you know, by um, being the, one of the first Pepsi music accelerators around the world. So with this, I want to invite um, our global Senior Director of like, you know, Artist Management, Alan Healy, whom you met yesterday to formally award her with a certificate. So let's welcome Alan. Second. So I want to thank Momo and, and Richard for really building on the Pepsi dream of Accelerator and for your passion as a young woman to really embrace who you are. It's just really aspirational and it's very live for now and what our brand means and it's so lovely to have you as part of our team. So in appreciation, we'd like to give you an Artist Accelerator Award wow. from Pepsi. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mom. Any last word? Well, I think that's a really inspiring way to close this session, and um, you know, on time and, and filled with, with great insight. And also, like uh, um, for those of you that are still staying in Singapore, please come join us to watch Momo tonight. That's right at Clark's Key. At Clark's Key, yes, um, at nine, 9 p.m. 9 p.m. So Momo is going to perform for us. Thank you, Momo. Thank, Thank you, you Momo. Richard. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>